The problems were there before you arrived. Um, this one I'm going to bring up because I can put it in a bit of perspective. If you look at the average Filipino that's gone overseas, you've got basically two types. You've got those that are your domestic helpers, which um, are normally going to Hong Kong, China, etc. And as the economy has expanded, lands have got more expensive, people have got to the point where they can be sleeping on kitchen floors and stuff. Um, then you've got your engineers and your nurses, etc., who go a bit further afield. Um, could be the Middle East, could be Europe, could be US, where the standard of living is a little bit higher, um, but still not fantastic. And the reason it's not fantastic is because people back home milk people dry. They, they, there's this whole debt of gratitude thing where people can't be allowed to develop a new life. I remember a friend of mine talking about some of the Filipino community where he lives because they're part of the same church where they haven't got anything, they're, they're riddled with debt. You know, this is in the UK and the debt's not theirs, it's because they get, hello, um, your niece is sick, can you send money for medicine? Hello, your uh, nephew needs sponsorship for college. Hello, you you know, all day long. And the whole point is, when you go, I haven't got any money, they don't believe you. But the whole point is, rather than going, get stuffed, um, they just give them the money. So what happens? It goes on the credit card, it goes on this, it goes on that. There was actually a documentary um, that was done in the UK on this subject. Um, it, I can't remember which media group did it, but the the fact was they turned around um, and it showed this one uh, Filipino woman that was living inside a, a cupboard under the stairs in London. And what what it was is she was going bankrupt. She actually was going to the court with her paperwork to say, "I am bankrupt." Um, even on that day her husband back in the Philippines is phoning up going oh we need money we need money and she says I'm going bankrupt she she said he didn't even give me any support he didn't even say oh are you okay or anything all he wanted was money now this is why I'm quite strong in saying people don't let people rub you into this crap this isn't culture this is extortion See, culturally, you'd share the wealth. But culturally, um, you share the burden. When you have people sat on their backsides in the Philippines that are just milking every bit of money that somebody else is making um, for the next, well, until they die, that is not culture. That's extortion. Um, if somebody was supporting their family back home in a sensible way, then that's fine. You know, I have no issue with somebody saying, well, I'm putting my kids through school, I'm putting my niece through school, etc. That's a choice. But if, for example, your sister breeds and has about nine kids, etc., and then goes, pay for all of them, then I'll just say, get stuffed. You should learn to close your legs. Because at the end of the day, that's that's not sharing it the the whole point of sharing it is that you should be working she should be working if she was working so well she wouldn't have so many bloody kids but this is where it's been abused it's the same as when people go oh you're a hero the reason they do that is it shuts you up um i know people don't like me saying it but that's the reality and it's not just Philippines does this. I know Indians and Pakistanis get the same thing going back from the Middle East to India and Pakistan. They're the big king when they go home and then later on when they go retire, nobody's really interested in them because they're not bringing gifts anymore. That's just the way life is. I mean, if you're the famous person that goes back home where everybody else has got nothing else going on, you'll always be the famous person until you stop leaving and going to interesting places. Um, especially if you're bringing gifts but I'm just saying don't get wrapped up on it from a foreigner's point of view this whole debt of gratitude is not your problem um, 
if somebody wants to support their parents, that's fine. But when it starts going extended family, etc., I will just cut out the dead wood. It is not your problem. These problems were there before you arrived. At no point did they go to your new wife and say, you know what, when you get married, um, you're going to have to send us money every month. If they do, I'll turn around and say, well, we're not getting married, simple as that. It is not your problem. It, I don't care what anybody says, these problems were not yours. They, they were there before you arrived. They didn't, you're not supposed to support someone else's family anyway. I mean, in Philippine culture, I'm sure the uh, sharing goes on 50-50. You know, I can't see um, a Filipino husband being forced to support his wife's family. I, I can't see that coming on. I may be wrong, but in Chinese culture, you normally get the, the woman becomes the, um, the support of the husband's family. She joins the husband's family. As such, this is why there's a lot of kidnappings and stuff going on in China because the, the ratio of boys and girls is actually wrong. So to get more wives, you have to go and find them, um, which is becoming a bit of an issue in China. Because what happens is, in China, when your parents get elderly, your wife will look after your parents. In If you're female, the, you don't have somebody to look after your parents. That's why this is quite important in Chinese culture. I don't think this exists in the Philippines in the same way. I, I mean, generally you find the old people offering better health because they don't seem to drink as much and um, seem to be more active than, than a lot of people I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are not your problems. These problems exist before you got there. But more importantly, most of the time, it's people extorting money, not actually needing it in the first place. Um, I remember somebody I know, the, his wife's working away in Saudi Arabia, saying, oh, we need money for the building work, etc., for the windows, etc. He was sitting drinking his way through the lot. He, when she got home, nothing had been done on the house, and she'd been away for a year or two. Is that, not only is that okay with you, but would you find that acceptable to do to somebody? The answer is no. So to hell with it. That's what I'm saying. You know, if somebody's willing to do that to somebody, um, leave somebody out in the desert for a year and a half or two years while they sit and drink on their backside, no, don't help them. Right? Simple as that. I would not help somebody that is actually abusing somebody else. No, not in this lifetime or any other.